a disaster this morning, but we are about to turn things around. All righty. <clears throat> what I wanted to do... Is it, McKenzie? I'm sorry? Are we talking to McKenzie? No, we, we, we're, we're talking to everyone that's listening right now. Okay. And there's a very a significant reason why I wanted to do this today, and I wanted to do this on the very first show, is... One of the things that always amazed me when, uh, for 12 years now that we've been working together, you, you're constantly hatching eggs. And it is incredible how easy it is if you have the right setup. But more importantly, here's what we're about to do. We're already behind schedule. But it is Friday, May 7th. And right now it is 140. We're going to set these eggs right now mm -hmm. so that they will hatch three weeks from today, Hopefully, yeah. during the show. Mm -hmm. You used to do, every year, when you used to work for IBM, uh, Earth Day. Mm -hmm. and you, Or when you would even do come and help yeah. us and do shows, you knew, okay, here's when the show's gonna be, when to set the eggs, so that at the exhibit, at the show, at the booth, at your they, chicken booth, they yeah. were hatching. So that's what I wanna do right now. I mm -hmm. wanna go ahead and start these eggs, Okay, and I have one caveat. I had the Brinzia last time when I used to do that, when I used to time it exactly right. This one, you know, I, I, I only have had a couple hatches with this one, so I'm not sure if it's going to be exactly to the hour like the other one was, but I think it will be. I know you, you're looking nervous right now. And another <laughs> thing that we can do is uh, we can set them, like a group of them, every 30 minutes or every hour to try to get that, staged which is what i would do for the for the show too for the previous you know the chicken booth shows is i would stack i would set them like set six and then set another six 30 minutes later and another six 30 minutes later so it, i knew that at the chicken booth i would have eggs on display in the different thank you it's in different stages of hatching so if somebody came by to the chicken booth, there would be one pipping, one unzipping, one hatching. I had no idea. So no. You, you just took it to a whole nother level, and that makes perfect sense. So let's go ahead and... And another thing is, is that it's exactly timed. That you can do that with the, with the full-size eggs. Uh, the smaller the egg, the shorter time it takes to hatch. Um, the bantam eggs are typically maybe a day late. Or, or, I mean, I'm sorry, a day earlier. Okay. And, you know, quail eggs are sometimes two weeks instead of three weeks because they're much smaller. And then the duck eggs are another extra week. So it's really the size of the egg determines their their hatch. Down to, like, the hour. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it could so, be within a day. So even this one that's extra big would take slightly longer than the ones that are slightly smaller. Can uh, Kristen move her mic closer to her face? Yes, please. Thank watch you. the watch the water. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I like the Yeti mics that we were using on the road. Okay. Um, so anyhow, we're we're gonna set these, and we may not put all of them in there today. I mean, right now we're actually gonna do all of them today. Yeah, I think I was just gonna say, what do you mean we're not doing them, all of them? But we might put a few in there later, like the Bantam ones. Uh, we can show everyone the Bantam eggs, but the full size ones we're gonna set right now. And the bantam ones, we we can set a few of these as well, but we can also set some in like an hour or okay. a little bit later. He, here's what I was hoping to do, and I have not asked you this question yet. I was hoping, huh? See how little it is. <laughs> so I was hoping that since you were saying in the beginning of the show, which, um, again, we had all those technical difficulties, but yeah, when we first met with Granville County, met with the state, talking about purchasing this building, I have all these questions about the building, the sewer, the internet, the water, da da You go, can we have chickens there? <laughs> oh, I got it in writing. It yes, was on an email. I'll never forget that. I would love, if possible, with your permission, that the chickens that we plan on having here will be the ones that we hatch right now. Well, you can keep these, yeah. You sure? Because I know that maybe you already got people that want certain breeds or whatever, but I just thought it would be so much fun to right now get these going and hatch them in three weeks during the show, mm -hmm. and then those will be the ones that hopefully we'll have our own coop by now. 
Uh, but those would be the ones. Wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. Okay. So before we get started, explain to me real quick, where did these eggs come from? These, uh, these came from my backyard. Um, so some of these are going to be, this is going to be an olive agar and uh, this is barnyard mix. So we don't even have to put these in here, but I brought them just in case. And then I have, um, looks like 22 bantam eggs and I brought uh, a variety. I get these from Mark, the bantam breeder in Wake Forest. Um, he's very kind. He gave me a couple sets to do classrooms. Those went in the inc the classroom incubator on Wednesday. So we have the different breeds that I was discussing okay. earlier. How many would you like to set today? The, we max it out. We're, we're going to max it out. Okay. So now let's go back to, let's open this up right now. And, and Ingrid, let us know if anyone's having any questions. And I want to make sure they see this. Okay. So this has got to be one of the olive agers. Yes. Okay. We know it's the olive agar female because. Mm -hmm. It's an olive egg. It's an olive egg. It's just that simple. Who is the father? I only have one rooster, so it has to be a black copper moran. So we are going to have a cross between an olive agar and a black copper moran. Mm -hmm. Now, have you hatched that cross before? Nice. Yeah, I, it was an earlier, sh earlier show. Um, <laughs> everyone else was getting baby chicks, and I didn't have any baby chicks, so I just said, oh, baby chicks. So I just, I just loaded up my incubator with whatever was in the backyard, and the, I, I hatch usually the colored eggs and the moran eggs. So nice. I can have roughly identifiable breeds. All right, so I, you... I have one of Kristen's olive agar moron mixes. Nice. And right. she's great. She's a sweet chicken and she has really nice olive colored eggs. Now, is that an official breed yet? Mm -mm. Well, they're sold in the catalogs. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if, the, if you want to go do a chicken show and win a blue ribbon, no. I don't think my, so. My question is, is there a, a specific breed that is half copper moron Half olive agar. You've taken my two favorite breeds, one of my two top favorite breeds, and bred them together. But an olive agar is a mix in itself. Yeah, just like so a, olive agars can look very different. Just like a uh, well, the red stars or red sex links are a mix. Can we name this breed, please? It's olive agar. But it's a French copper moron father. Right. That's so how what you is get the... the blue egg to be darker. Do you, do you feel me? No? No, you guys, I mean, is this a French olive agar now? No, that's how you always do it. That's how you get olive But Matt eggers. wants to call it a French olive agar. Uh -huh. that's, that's kind okay. of fancy. Yes, it is. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, I get it. So you can't breed olive agar to olive agar and get an olive agar? I don't think... I don't know if that works. I was just reading up on this, and um, you can breed a pure a purebred to a purebred chicken and get what they call an F1, if I remember correctly. And that that one is a very good chicken, and that's where you get the olive agar, and that's where you get the red sex link. But if you start breeding those F1s and F1s, you, th there's no telling what oh you're Oh, my get. gosh. Okay, so this reminds like, It's like the first generation. You okay, can so do this for one generation, but if you continue doing it, you lose those characteristics. I, I don't think you get you know, an, a, a bird that's not going to be a good bird. You just, you just lose that. Are you saying this is equivalent to you can't breed mules? You only get a mule. No, with... I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they're sterile. Oh, okay, we're going to move on. I, I, what I'm saying is I, I like just. It, you, if you have what, what, what are those dogs the, the, that don't shed? You, a Poodles? poodle and a, and a Labrador. You like, get a Labrador. Labradoodle. It, you could, you don't start breeding Labradoodle and Labradoodle. You don't? Do you? No. You, you no, lose the you, you lose don't. the benefits. A Labradoodle is just a mix of a Labrador and a poodle. Wow. So to get more of them, you just get more Labradors. This and is why poodles. I love this show. Right, I learned right, right, right. so much. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, I, I okay. So now we you also have some questions. For well, you. let's go ahead. Let's let's get to some of the questions. So one of the questions um, is, how do you know which ones have chicks? So how do you know that they're fertilized? And which ones are just... Well, we actually won't know 100% until about a week. We'll candle them. But both, uh, all of these eggs came from people who have roosters. Okay. So, so if, <clears throat> if you have a rooster and you have the right 
ratio, you have a very good confident level that they're going to be fertilized. What is that perfect ratio? One to 10, 15, 20. Why? Well, <laughs> 60. <There's... laughs> I so mean, it, it... it just depends on the rooster, like how, how virile he is, how much he gets around, uh, how accepted, acceptable the, the hens are. To do, his, do the hens really have dances. a choice to not accept? Oh, um, I've Cause... seen mine run and hide. Really? Well, yeah. I think they all eventually. Okay, so 1 to 10, 1 to 20, and that is not only to make sure that you have a good confidence level that the eggs are fertilized. Right. Um, but that's also to de to decrease the stress on the females, right? Right, right. Because that's often what we talk about is we're actually advocates of not having roosters mm -hmm. because they get, one, they're noisy, and they cause a lot of stress to the females. Right. Here's what I see happening soon in the future. Another reason why I wanted to really take the time to talk about this. We all, I'm assuming, have seen the nightmares of these baby chicks, DOA, yeah. at the post office. Mm -hmm. Sad. You know, we love the convenience of being able to order from these hatcheries. And these hatcheries do a phenomenal job. But we just had a major problem. And one of the things we can do to avoid that problem is learning that it's really easy to hatch your own chicks. Um, one of the downsides is that you may have 50% males, just like the hatchery would, yeah. but you would have to uh, deal with that. So anyways, I just, again, I think more and more people are going to be interested in hatching their own because of the casualties that we had with the United States Post Office. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask is this is a brand new incubator uh, to me. I've never seen this before. You mentioned earlier the Brincy yeah. that uh, we've used. The Octa octagon yeah it has octagon. A, it's an octagon shape mm -hmm. it was um, a great incubator what made you switch up I had it up for years and actually it was the rocker I had the the rocker I went through like three of those and they kept breaking so well that's what happens the, when you hatch baby chicks year round Is well it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, so I just decided to go with my local tractor supply and get three of these oh gotcha okay so we um now we in no way shape or form are being paid by tractor supply or the maker of this we're just well, and what, what's nice about this one is it does have temperature reading at the top it has the 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 uh humidity at the top and it also has a countdown where at the appropriate time it stops turning so you don't even have to time it. It oh. has like a countdown timer. Okay, so... And I like how it, it spins the eggs and they actually roll all the way over. Yeah, this is more it doesn't natural. doesn't rock them like this. It, yes, Exactly, because the mama hen, she'll turn them yeah. for the first two weeks, right? Or up until five or... Th 17 days, I believe. And then after that, the remaining of the 21 days, yeah. she'll stop moving them, right? But I've noticed that... E that if she, that isn't, that's not like a, they, well, you, they still hatch even if it's still turning and if she does. Gotcha. Well, there has to be a reason why she normally stops turning it. And that's another plus that yeah, to this it, unit yeah, is it. that it knows to stop where right. with the other incubators, you have to tell it. Yeah. To you stop. have to unplug the turner. You have to unplug yeah. the turner. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That is awesome. All right, I want to go ahead and get started here. Um, Nan, did you have any questions? I see you, I thought you were raising your hand. No. Yes, no, I love pictures. <laughs> Definitely want to. Yes, I know, and I, I tell you. Yeah. I like your shirt. Yeah, this shirt is amazing. <laughs> you didn't find that here, did you? <laughs> okay, and I, you know, and, and, okay. So let's like go it. ahead and let's get this going. We got so much to do okay, today, okay, and I don't want right, to lose right, everyone's right, attention. Yes. But um, so you've been running this particular incubator for how long? Um, I've been running this since that, that show that I got, I got broody. I don't know what show that was. They hatched on, um, they hatched on Easter. So whenever, three weeks before that. Okay. So, um, how are you holding up is your, uh, I know that, that the headphones that you do not like, um, unfortunately we were forced okay. to wear today. Well, at least it's of our there. problems. All right. So we have, um, Americanas. Olive Eggers. What chicken is this one here? Oh, that's going to be a barnyard mix. Okay. So these are La Fletch and... It's going to be a barnyard mix? Uh-huh. Okay. If if I show pictures, will, will it... Will they show there? Okay. 
Okay, and then we got Gus coming in. If you guys all of a sudden hear like someone breathing heavy, it's not me. Uh, Gus's debut on Video Chicken. <laughs> um, so these are the breeds. <laughs> so we have a. Okay, once again, we got that green background, but I mean, the, but that's okay. Oh, we can, yeah, so no, the, but we can see the chicken. We yeah. can see the chicken. Let's see the chicken. Okay, we'll just scroll through these real quick here. These are all bantams. This is the um, old English game, black, red. And, and Ingrid can bring these up on her screen. And the silver duck wing, the La Flesh. Ooh, wait, wait, what's this? La Flesh. Oh, do we, are we hatching that's some of them? That's from Go figure. And the Nankin, that's the oldest known bantam. Okay, we're going to have and major problems. We got a monster days. walking through the studio right now. And a He's, Sarama. Okay, and okay, we, we, we got to prevent okay. a problem here, a casualty. Uh, Gus is, uh, who is a very good boy. Yep, um, okay. Actually, let me put this one in instead. I did collect that this morning and put that in my pocket. Hold on, check. So we've talked about this one before. Yeah, we'll see what that ends up being. Th this gray is just absolutely incredible. So Nankin, Pinchion, we did look at a picture of those. Sarama, um, Pinchion, Nankin. Okay, so you really want to hatch some uh, bantams. All right, so we'll do the and Carolina that. Coops chickens later. What, what do you mean? Which ones do you want? We can get you anything. Now, is there any, does it matter? I notice you are pointing the smaller end towards the Yeah, that's center. what the direction said. And we have Well Summer Bantams, Sarama. He's working on a Sarama Easter egg or cross. Well Summer Bantam, you say? Yes. Hmm. And after a week, we can candle these and see if they're fertile. And then we can take those out and maybe put some other ones back in so we get a full 24 to hatch. Right. Okay, I love that. All right, so now you just put them in there, and this turntable here is what's going to do the rolling. Right. Just like the mama hen mm -hmm. would do. And then I see you already put water in the bottom. What's the water for? It's for the humidity level. Perfect. Okay, so it's very important that we have the right humidity level. Uh, one of the nice things about the Brincy, I remember when we used to do that in the classrooms, is we had that accessory that would constantly add the humidity. So this incubator doesn't... You do have to put water in the little cube over here and pretty much every day. Okay. Just so that's, a little little water in there. Yeah, so that's day. kind of one of the downsides. Right. But I tell you, there's you something... You should almost have like a little robot that can... I don't know. I guess that's what kids are for. Do you want some more questions? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, let's go ahead with some more questions. Okay, Sandy asked about her rooster ability. She has two sitting hens with 12 eggs under each, and both of them have hatched none. Ooh. She's at day 29 and has to deal with removing several rotten eggs. It's been very sad, and they're only a year old, and the ratio is two roosters to 16 hens. So and I guess they're, the roosters aren't... Okay, so does she? were all the eggs rotten? Or well, they're not hatching, and after 29 days. So if it were me and I did do this, I would check to see if any of those developed. Or did she candle them? If I would candle them at one week, for sure, and then take out all the duds, um, that will tell you your fertility rate right away. Can you away. explain to people how you would candle an egg? Yes. Um, if you have an egg. Oh, actually, this has a built-in candler. Oh, there's a button. <laughs> well, okay, so before I forget to that point, uh, okay, that is amazing. Okay, um, so yeah, there's a bright light. All you need is a bright light in a dark room. There is a bright light right here. You click this button and a bright light comes out. So you can put the egg right here and you can see through the egg usually and you the air... Pocket. So the air, air sac. Pocket, yeah, yeah. The air cells right here on top the fat end, and you can see at one week you can see at least some blood, some veins, veins. and maybe a, a dark spot where the embryo was starting to develop. Um, further along, if you candle it closer to hatch, there is of course the air cell still in here and a very dark black opaque almost like a ribbon. It's very opaque all the way through on the bottom part of the shell. So that's the way you can tell if your eggs are fertilized, if they're developing properly, 
and you can start weeding them out if they're not. You'll be able to see right through them. If it's not fertilized, you can see right through them and you will see just a very slight, uh, you can see the yolk. Mm -hmm. So don't, dis don't um, you know, mistake that for an embryo. An embryo is really black. It's like a black spot in there, not the, not the yolk. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I had no so idea. So with this lady's question, um, I would, I would def, I would look into the, I would look in the eggs. I know that's horrible, but I would look to see if any of them. Okay. What she's developed. saying is crack them open and see what's inside. And sometimes you can just do a little tiny hole. That's what I did to some eggs at my house. I mean, the quail eggs too. That they were behind the hatch day, and I was like, oh, shoot, are these twelve dud eggs? So I made a tiny little hole where I thought the pip might be, and that's at, um, you know, the the middle part of the shell is where the the chick, right, like right here. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a little hole to see if there were actually chicks in there, or quail, and there I got feathers. So I was like, oh, well, there, you know, that means that they were they're fully developed, and then it was breathing. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, it, there, I, it's just. It's just time. So real quick, let me let me see that egg uh, because and that that quail did actually hatch. Here's what is amazing. So we will see that hopefully in three weeks that these eggs that we're about to set they will pip. They will make that little tiny hole, and that's when it's taking its first breath. And they do it right in that area. And why is it right in that that's area? That's the weakest part of the shell. And if you want a candle, if you don't have one of these, all you do is go into a dark room with a bright light and you put the bright light behind the egg, and you can see through it. Yeah, you absolutely can. You can do. You can and actually. And you can also test the age of your eggs too in the same way by measuring the air cell, because the air cell gets bigger the older the eggs are. So right. that one was was laid this morning. You can't even see the egg, the air cell in that one. Oh, so we're not plugged in right now. That's why the uh, candling. Okay, so there's a candler up here. That is awesome. Here's the other thing I wanted to mention before I forget, that I love about this incubator. It's a giant clear dome. Right. That is I mean, this would be ideal for classrooms because all the kids could be able to see in there. Here you go. Have that back. Um, so that is awesome. Okay. So we got the eggs in there. We're ready to plug this in. And hopefully now it is one o'clock in three weeks at one o'clock. We're going to start seeing baby chicks hatch. Right. Right. Okay. Let me, I'll take that out of here. We have another question, Kristen. Um, somebody asked if you can add more eggs after a week, if some of the egg, original eggs uh, weren't yeah. fertile. You're not supposed to, but I do. Um, well, aren't they only supposed to sit on them for three weeks? With right, the broody you're going to have a staggered hatch, and you're going to have to keep the egg turner going. Right, so, so if you're, yeah, so you would do it. I, I found that, that they still hatch, even if they're turning. Where's the but under a broody, it's wouldn't over do here. That. What? Under a broody wouldn't oh, do that. Oh, a broody's going to get up when yeah. the first eggs hatch and leave the nest. And you want her to get up because if she waits for the other ones, the chicks are going to die. So she does need to get up and start leading those chicks to food and water. So definitely with a broody. Unless there's some way you can start them all at the same time and introduce them later. And there she goes. Perfect. We also have Derek had asked that he recently hatched, got a hatch of chicks, and one was wobbly and fell over a lot. Now that she's four weeks old, we can see that her two outside toes on her left foot are curved and were possibly broken at hatch. So he's like, he asked, is this going to be a problem as she gets older? Will she adapt? Or is there anything that he can do to help those little toes? He might be able to splint them, but with the small little yeah um as long as the chick is getting to food and water and being is mobile enough to do so um it should be okay but anytime a chick is there's deformities and it's not able to get to food and water it probably should be cold unfortunately and let's be clear you didn't say cold you said called Hold. That's a nice way of saying humane euthanize. Right. All righty. So thank you so much for that. I am excited. I just, I can't wait for people that are watching the show right now. In three weeks, believe it or not, right around one o'clock, you know, a little bit before, a little bit later, 
uh, they will start hatching. It is just incredible how accurate the time can be. And that's just one of the things and that- And they're, they're gonna stay here. You you and your family are gonna have to keep water in there, all right? Well, I, maybe I got overzealous there. Yeah. I just thought it'd be so much fun for those to no, be- No, you can do that. Well, I don't know, but I, uh, you know- I'm, Jetta you're, can do that. You're a much bigger fan of bantams than I am. Ingrid. <laughs> I don't know. That's what's wrong with him. He doesn't I mean, love the bantams. Like I didn't say I didn't you love the. You got a the problem with short, short things? Yeah. yeah. Oh dear yeah. lord! I just can't win today. All right. Anyways, all right. So moving on is uh, Mackenzie still in the green room? Uh, we probably won't be able to hear her. All right. So we'll have to work on that. We'll have to figure out what happened. No idea, but we will figure that out. She uh, was actually people could hear her. Yeah. But we so we couldn't hear that people could hear her. That, and right now she's charging her phone. All right, so. perfect, yeah. So for whatever reason, we're just not hearing it like we were able to earlier. That'll be just a setting again somewhere. All right, so uh, let's go ahead because it is already past 1 o'clock, and I imagine there's got to be a lot of questions, comments, things that we have not gotten to. I promised everyone we would take the time to answer as many questions as we could, and maybe there's a couple other things that we did want to talk about to give everyone, it's, everyone a heads up on mm -hmm. things that are happening at Carolina Coops. You know, we did mention that we have the new building, that is huge news. I know the next big question is going to be, how soon are you going to have Coops out of here? Um, I'll start sharing now that we can publicly talk about us being here. Um, talk about more about what's going on behind the scenes in order to make that possible. But that is what we are up to. We are going to make it so that you can order the world's best chicken coop and have it shipped that day. And that, that should help your customers, you know, the, the timeline, the production, the wait time should help all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the lead time is just a nightmare the right now. Time. And, you know, we've had with, with 2020 and COVID and blah, blah, blah. There's been so many curveballs thrown our way. And we have hit every curveball out of the park, as far as I'm concerned. You, you, my team that here at Carolina Coops has just been phenomenal. But there have been some things like a lumber shortage. Yeah, the lumber. I keep hearing about that on the news. How are you dealing with that? <laughs> Do you need to take a breath? <laughs> um. Oh, it, it's, can we bleep out the? <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a day to day thing. It do is. Do you have wood? We do, we do, and it kills me to say this. It's come down to, the wood that is available, is coming from Europe. That is incredible. I put and, that graphic in behind you, just so you know. So yeah, there is a graphic. We can't see it like we normally can. It's on um, your sheet, though. It is on our sheet. Yeah, right here. Um, <laughs> I thought that was funny. I'm not saying lumber prices are getting out of hand, but I was thinking of building a birdhouse, but the bank turned down the loan. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is so true. Um, lumber, and it's actually, not only is it available coming from Europe, mm -hmm. it's less expensive. Even with shipping? Even with shipping. Wow. And that Europe doesn't have the natural resources that we have. That's unbelievable. And to take it a step further, here's the part that is blowing my mind. And I didn't want to believe it until I saw it. And truth be told, I have not seen it yet with my own eyes. I have not been back to New York because we've been down here uh, closing on this building. But I trust everything my guys tell me up there. The wood quality, especially the appearance grade, is even better. Well, they're Europeans. <laughs> They make like the BMWs and stuff like that. So, you know, and I was told, I was told this lumber is a higher end premium lumber. It's specifically designed for appearance, which is the name of our game. We mm -hmm. can't hide our two by fours behind drywall like home yeah. builders do. Uh, you see 98% of it. And the guys have said, this is actually, I, they're telling me they like it better than the Doug fir. So to my surprise, there's a and silver. it's performing well too, right? Oh, they, that's, well, that was our biggest concern is we wanted to make sure it performed as well as the Doug fir. And they're saying it's equal, if not better, in the performance of the Doug fir. Uh, but more importantly, the appearance, which is very, very important, which we had a couple situations where it was a nightmare. That's how bad the lumber shortage was starting to get is that even the, there was just no appearance grades anymore. They were just sending whatever they could just so we can build the coops. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do after the Euro lumber? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I obviously want to go back to buying, I, I, we'll say American lumber, but it's a lot of it is coming out of Canada, but it's American mills. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to support as many American companies. And 99% uh, chance that's what we'll do once things start to settle out. But when it comes to the cost of lumber, 
to go up, you know, it's it's approaching 300% increase. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people on the side have asked, you know, how are you still continuing to be able to run the business? Because you got to make money. Right. You can't go bankrupt. Uh, it has not been easy. It has been a nightmare. I'm not going to get into all the details, but it has not been easy to make ends meet. Uh, but we have. And we have had to, and there's been some complaints out there. Ingrid brought some things to my attention. I think it was even in here. Someone uh, had a concern that they inquired about a coop. Actually, it's right here. Um, Ingrid, can you fill me in on what that was? Yeah, so she asked about our coops through chat on the website. And then um, I emailed her some information. And then she was talking about it with her husband and waited six weeks. And by that time, we had raised our prices a little bit. I don't think it was a huge amount. It was not as much as I was told I should. Yeah, it was, yeah. So now she feels, you know, she's she's sad that she waited, I guess, and and wanted us to honor the price, which we've done if people had actually emailed a request before we did it and we didn't get back to them, but not just because they sat on the fence and waited. Yeah. It's a difference. I tell you, if you're on the fence right now, whether you're thinking about building really anything out of wood or building your own chicken coop or purchasing your own chicken coop, you have two choices. Put in your deposit now because we haven't done what I hope to God we don't have to do, and that is have market value. Like when you go to a restaurant oh, yeah. and you order seafood or you know a really nice steak, they tell you it's market value. I almost wish I, we would have done that because it would help us focus on more other things other than just trying to make sure we get lumber and at a, at a decent price. Uh, and we have not raised the prices on the customers that have already placed their order. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going down. No, I heard it's gonna go even higher, especially through the summer. As homes start to get, you know, the building of homes increases up in the north. Well, people are doing a lot of projects too. Over yeah, it, summer. yeah, it's a whole mess of things, and it, it's a nightmare. It, it's a really, it's a real deal. I have a couple construction projects that I've been sitting on, expecting the price of wood's going to come down, and it's, it's. I'm I don't, just going to sit on it. Uh, maybe, a, maybe another year. Yeah, that is what I would do: is either put your order in now because the price of lumber is going to continue to go up, or no one can predict the future. But I'm hoping yeah. by this time next year. Oh, and to clarify, I can sit on these projects because. I can sit on these projects. If I had chickens, I wouldn't be able to wait. And I would definitely get my order in. Yeah, you know, and I I hate to say it because it sounds like we're being pushy salespeople. It's just reality. It is just reality. We work so hard to make it, you know, our goal has been the best scoop for the best price. And I know so many other people that are out, you know, in in the world with their businesses. And it's just very easy to be like, well, my prices went up, so um, Mm -hmm. the price on my product has to go up. You know, I've always said there is so much room for improvement in-house that we can um, use this to force ourselves to run as efficient and lean as possible to not have to, so that we don't have to raise prices. And that's why we bought this building. The larger building is going to help us build it quicker, which is actually per coop is going to keep labor down. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to increase the prices just because of the cost of everything going up. Even the metal, the screen, high density, you know, the prices have gone up. Prices are uh, the materials not available. So, anyways, moving on. Um, what else? The uh, what else are some of the things that Ingrid you have here that you wanted us to talk about? Um, well, we had Laura who wants to move her Cali coop. Mm. She's moving, and it's in an enclosed area, so she can't move it as one piece. Um, so I wrote in there. She said it would be nice to be able to panelize it to disassemble but we'd have to cut bolts between the panels to do so because of the way it's assembled. Are Um, they bolted? I don't know if that was something that they did during their... I thought they were screwed. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we have a customer that has a Cali Coop. Uh, Her name is Laura, and she wants to move her Cali Coop, but she is unable to disassemble it to get it out of a area that must be have fencing, probably can't get through a gate. Yeah. And she's saying that they are unable to pull it apart. Well, she's asking what's the best way to do it. So oh, okay. Oh, so okay. instead of taking it all apart, is there a way that she can take it apart? Like maybe leave the hen house intact or I know they have the yeah. roofing and the rafters have to come off. But what kind of tips would you have for someone who does have to partially take their coop apart? To well, I, to be honest with you, without seeing it, the first thing I would do is oh, I, I want to know what are the restrictions. Is it that the fence is four foot, six foot? It says the coop itself would fit through the door, but the run and roof would have to come off. 
Yeah, she's, from what I understand from speaking to her, that it was um, in an enclosure with, with like trees. And so it was built on this place. When it okay, so there. obviously lifting it up and over is not an option. Yeah, no, it's or not. Or getting a crane. I mean, we, we've put coops in with cranes before, yeah. long before we made them modular. Um, you got to disassemble it. I mean, you got to start with the roofing because if the roofing's too wide, that also means your gables are going to be too wide. But... You should easily be able to, believe it or not, you, you can do this. Take the roofing panels off. That's all reversible. All right? They're, they're screwed. Just, yeah. they're, they're roofing screws. And then, this is slick. Maybe number them. This is slick. <laughs> I never thought about this. You do not then have to take apart your purlins and then disassemble your trusses. You actually, with our coop, can go in there and unscrew the roofing system from the bottom part of the six foot walls and take it off like taking a hat off turn it sideways and be able to go right through your door because that would be a nightmare to try to pull apart all those purlins and take apart all your trusses and all your filler they're pieces not screwed. they're hammered in right yeah. so you can actually unscrew what we call filler pieces but in the world of framing um they're freeze blocks in between the trusses unscrew that and it'll be like taking a hat off does that make sense mm -hmm. It does. So what about the... The run. The run. And then the run, is un, you can unscrew that. It, yeah, if you want yeah. to, then yeah, you can start um, unscrewing your walls. And then, of course, yeah, if you can leave your hen house together, is that's that ideal. Yeah, the hen house. But I thought the hen house, I thought the bottom part could fit through the door. The coop itself would fit through the door, but the run and roof have to come off. Yeah, see, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I can see the roof being too wide because you got your overhang. Take that maybe, off. Maybe now, the hen house, you can fit through the door sideways. And you're going to have to take your um, egg hutch off as well, Yeah. which is pretty easy. I hope that helps. Uh, Laura, I guess the best we thing... We can give uh, his the husband's number. His name's Rick. We can give him a call. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do is give yeah. them a call. Would definitely love to help them with their suggestions. I hope... Uh, how are we looking? How's the uh, questions coming in? Good. We have a couple more. Yeah, let's go. Out. Let's start... Uh, Hammering through some questions, please. Okay. Um, when So Cyrus asks, if a hen takes over the nest of a broody hen, then leaves, and the broody hen finds a new spot, how long can the fertile eggs be okay without having a hen under them? Having a hen. Uh, having not, the eggs under the hen. Not, yeah. very, not very long. Right. Maybe a few hours. Wow. Yeah, because the mama hen does get off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've got so many broodies right now. I've got nine nine and one that yeah and a tenth one that hid eggs and just showed up with a baby chick <laughs> Hatch, hatched eggs and a uh, cat carrier right so the mama hen will get off the clutch of eggs to mm -hmm. go eat drink defecate um and then or come... she might get bullied i mean the other hen might say i want that nest and push her off and then that that hen may continue wherever she goes she may just move over to the nest net the next nest over gotcha so pretty much an egg that is being incubated anything over an hour of not having a heat source well, I, mean, it, it, I think it's viable for maybe depending on the weather it could be a few hours mm, that's a good point i mean it, it doesn't die right away but it's do you want to go to kenzie uh, we, can are, we try? I don't think we're going to hear her. I think there's going to be settings in there. Uh, I can, really? I, I can they, get, said, they said they could hear her. They can hear her, but we will not be able to hear her. Uh, For some reason, there's something in settings. I'll mess with it later. It stinks. I was really looking forward to uh, talking to Mackenzie. Um, uh, I am 99.9% .9 sure it will not work. You don't want me to try? I can tell you how we can test. Go ahead and run a um, sound effects. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm having a hearing test right now. I know. Tell me if you can hear this. No, I'm not hearing it either. Yeah, no. We're not going to hear her, unfortunately, but I guarantee our audience can. Yeah. I guarantee our audience can. It's just going to be, for whatever reason, the audio is not being returned back into here. That'll be extremely easy for me to fix later. Okay. All right. So we see we got another question from Chester. So when do you tell Chester when you know a hen is ready to start laying? So besides their age, like when would you know to open up the nest box? I would say when her comb starts turning red, 
that's the sign of sexual maturity. And another clue is if she starts to squat in front of you. Mm. Yeah, they'll a lot usually of, do that before they start laying. Yeah, a lot of people think that they do that because they're like, oh, pick me up. Right. No, they're like, oh. That's for the rooster. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people didn't realize that's what they're doing. Yeah. When my son was little, I had the hens squatted for him a lot just because I think he was little. He was smaller. But he loved it because then he could just walk up and pick them up. Right. Absolutely. Um, I noticed here, number four, you, uh, Ingrid, you brought up the hemp situation. I thought we could take a couple seconds and, and yeah. talk about the hemp situation. <clears throat> Matt asked about that as well. Uh, Matt, uh, Fisher Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Good old, how you doing, Fisher Matt Ryan? Hope you are staying safe out there. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch the show today. And, um, yeah, there is a note here about the hemp situation. So we do have hemp in stock. Okay. Um, is it back in stock officially on the website? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I it's tell shipping you, out of New York. So it's not flat rate shipping. It's shipping from our headquarters in New York. So I'm going to update everyone. Here's what's going on with hemp. And believe it or not, I mean, we sell way more chicken coops than we do hemp. I spend way more time dealing with hemp than I do chicken coops. It is so frustrating. And here, here's the deal. Um, we, as everyone knows, we wanted to switch to the Aubie chick because it's designed for chickens. And long story short. And that was an exclusive contract for you. Exactly. Um, and I saw with my own eyes and we had some complaints from customers saying, Matt, this is dustier than the other stuff I had. We want something that's low in dust. And absolutely you do. Um, at least that's what's recommended. And I was noticing the same thing. Months and months of research. Long story short, because the Aubie chick has a smaller particle of herd or the shive, they can't de-dust it as well. So it's kind of the nature of the beast. The smaller the particle, the more dust you're potentially going to have with your bag of hemp. And so I said, okay, let's test that out. So we went out and got samples of hemp. And actually, we have it somewhere here. I almost I should have brought it in where, I don't know if I've shown you, the size of the fiber or the herd is huge. And there's just no dust. And it actually, I've had some chicken experts up there. At least they claim to be chicken experts. That's all they love is the larger hmm. particle. Now, to me, you got to go back into that sweet spot, which is what we always used to sell, and that is the horse bedding or the larger particle. Um, so we have also, believe it or not, have had a handful of customers tell us they prefer the Aubie chick, that they're not seeing an issue with the dust. They actually prefer it. Evan Archer right now is sweating like crazy down in Alabama, Finishing up the goose house. I can't wait to show everyone out there that. Um, but that customer, Shelly down there, said, no, I want the Aubie chick. So <laughs> here I'm like, I don't know what to do. Everyone that knows me, I'm trying to make everyone happy. But we need to find some kind of sweet spot. But here's the other thing that's going on. The hemp comes in from Europe. And the reason why we buy it from this particular company, because they are the inventors that have invented the system with a decorticator to separate the bass fibers from the herd. And they're phenomenal at it. They are the leaders. They're the ones teaching everyone, especially here in the States, how to do it. But they're just not here yet. Now, there are companies supposedly ready to deliver here in the States. And what I can tell you is I have been aggressively talking to them, negotiating, learning about their system uh, so that we can hopefully very soon say we are now selling hemp that was grown here in the United States. And I'm also hoping the price will be cheaper. But we'll see. So we got a lot going on. That's really exciting. To it, it, it is very exciting. But he, it does he, seem ridiculous to to import hemp from Europe. Yeah, it's caused so many problems yeah. with shipping. That's why there's been so many delays. Yeah. You know, like when that um, that uh, ship that was stuck sideways in the Suez Canal. Mm-hmm. You know, you got all these ships out in the ocean just waiting to come in. So that's what's going on. But here's the deal: we are aggressively trying to create the best product. And you know, here's the other thing too that I really enjoyed about the American companies that I've talked to. They will chop us the exact size of fiber Mm -hmm. we want. And here's another one. I never thought about this. If we can accept and feel that it will work having multiple different sizes of Heard in the bag instead of it all being pretty mm-hmm. consistent. Say we got a little, some big ones, yeah. some medium, some little. That'll actually bring the price down. That's and I don't, th- yeah, I don't think that's Ingrid's gonna make. Ingrid's nodding too. I, that just makes sense. So, yeah, I was blown I mean, I away. Like that. 
blown away when they said that. I said, I think that'll work perfectly, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to bring the price down. It'll be American and all that good stuff. So that's where we are with the hemp right now, but we do have lots of Albi chick. And okay, that is the last final point. A lot of people are always complaining about shipping. Yes, it is expensive to ship this herd. We had a warehouse in California, Chicago, and on the East Coast, and we did that purposely because we wanted to offer flat rate shipping. And that was, people like that, because if they're on the West Coast, they're not paying double the price to have it shipped all the way from the East Coast. It just makes good sense. The prices went through the roof for the fulfillment. What? Doubled. Really? Doubled to have it that fulfilled. Too? Everything. Everything's going through the roof. is an absolute nightmare. So I put the brakes on it. We, we sold out wow. of those warehouses there, and I said, no more. Um, it's, just, it's just gotten ridiculous. And I said, let's go back to how we were doing it. And unfortunately, if you're on the West Coast and you want to order this hemp. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come, hey. Non, come on in here. Non, come on in here. Um, come on in here. Don't, don't be shy. You want to sit down? Yeah, come on in. Good. I've, got my, I've got a Friday shirt on. <laughs> the, the, the Friday shirt is great, no? No, I think everyone will find it extremely funny. Mm -hmm. No, all right, never mind. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is what they brought to us. Check this out. This, Where did this come from? The U.S. company? This is a U.S. company. Okay. Very, very close to us. And here is a bag of the So this herd. is how it's grown. I want to see this first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here, yes, here is the hemp plant. And... Really, it's a waste product, right? That you're... The stalk. Hmm? Yeah, that's the stalk. Yeah. So, yeah, they don't use that normally. Yeah, yeah they use the flower, and they use well, the CBD, you... and the, or maybe, or they use the... Okay, the... yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I don't want to bore everyone getting into all the details. I just think it's really cool that you're able to use what was traditionally the throwaway piece and make this great product that's so good <clears throat> exactly so this darker fiber right here that you see and that's not the color of the plant that's actually from mold and fungus growing on it that it was uh it was it stayed too wet all right uh, but this is the bass fiber the fiber's job is to protect the internal part of the plant, which is the herd, that's what we use for the bedding because it's very absorbent all right um, but they put it through a machine they separate uh, can Wait, I can I so, have you, so what what grows in, through the middle? It has these hollow. That's a great question. Actually, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one thing I didn't ask. Like, but here here's some of the things that I was blown away by. Like um, it's, it's like a straw. Yeah. So this fiber, you know, you can you can even make a polymer. No, you're you're not. You are. Oh my gosh. It's a great straw. I mean, it's like, it's like completely hollow. Come on, try it. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to do it probably, I hope everyone else thought you were going to do it. You're just going to simply blow bubbles. No, you went right for using it as a straw. Well, yeah. You're, 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 you're crazy. Hmm. And I just explained that there's stuff on the outside of this that, but you got the one Oh, of you the, mean like poison? You got one of the toughest immune systems I have ever I, witnessed I, I in a human being. Yeah. Most plants have like a hollow, when they have the stalk, is, is hollow inside, which is another reason, just a little gardening tip, if you shouldn't cut down those plants sometimes because um, bugs and birds can use the hollow stalks. Oh, for wildlife, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is very, ho it is very hollow. Um, the process is to separate the bass fibers from the herd. We use the herd as the bedding. And yes, for years, the farmers were just discarding the herd. It was, a, it was a waste product. And now we have figured out great ways to use it, not only as bedding, but they're using it to make hempcrete. So that actually, you're going to see it being used for building homes. I was looking into that. Yes. So here is where they said, Matt, what if we sell it to you where you got small herd and large herd together? And I think that would make a great chicken bedding. And they said, this will keep the price down because it's going to cost more to go through another step of separating the different sizes of the herd. It seems a little woody. As far as because it's bigger? Yeah. But it's the same sponge. Ingrid, you have you seen this? You got, I, I still can't believe you just used that as a straw. <laughs> I only saw the other bag. I didn't see that bag. 
Yeah, so here is what we're, we normally sell. And think about it. You, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to actually get it consistent with the, five, uh, with the herd, all that can size. I throw, can I throw this to you? Sure. Nice. Oh, God, I hope you didn't hit the wrong button. Um, what do you think about and that? And we're off the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He, here's the other thing I want to show you guys. Check this out. So here is almost the finished bast fiber. Ooh. Yeah. Now that's nice for a nest. Exactly. Ooh. We are going to start. They're sending us a lot of it. And since you are running some experiments with nesting material and what the chickens prefer, um, I'm going to be giving you, I asked them to send me at least three or four. Oh, me too. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, I'll order more. Um, isn't this great? Yeah. I think this would make a phenomenal nesting material. But I, uh, just for, so everyone knows what uh, Kristen's been doing is you have all these nest boxes. Mm -hmm. And we know chickens are creatures of habit, and they've been used to nesting in. Coastal hay. Right, coastal hay, and you tried out some of the aspen mm -hmm. um, from Amazon, the pads, those mats, and did they end up switching? Initially, they didn't like them. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think I, I think I like them. I think, and they start. Once but do it, they like them? You know, once they they come flat, and I didn't realize that the chickens will like um, pull the pull the pieces out and they do try to nest with it mm -hmm. and it does pull out. I thought it was just going to stay like a flat, um, like pressed mat. Right, right. And they... I, I use straw on top of that as well, oh. which gives them, so I pull the, the bedding, uh -huh. the mat, the mat, but I also add a little straw so they can make that nice yeah. little bowl. Yeah. And also I've been deep littering them. When the deep nesting boxes what? get, get dirty, I'll just put a mat on top of the dirty. And then uh, when that gets dirty, I'll put another mat on top of that. It's like deep, deep litter. Um, why are your nest boxes getting dirty? I, I, I have an egg eater. Yeah. Oh, I haven't oh, found gosh. her yet, though. I keep putting them in isolation. And it it's, is it's the not, worst, yeah. having an egg eater. Yeah. Um, so what do you, wouldn't this make you a phenomenal... You didn't think that was funny? No. Uh, what, I, I, I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry. But deep littering, the... The nest. No, no, I, it's, I, I hope a lot of people are like, what do you mean? I have to deep litter my nest now? No, no, no. Okay, it, think, it, I don't want to confuse people. Lazy. <laughs> when you put clean on top of dirty, it's like when it snows and everything looks beautiful. Oh, but my it's God. Dirty. Oh, okay, anyways, so we are going to hopefully start selling this as a nesting material. The uh, companies are looking for more and more reasons. I to, do love that to be able to use the bass fiber. This is what you would use. In, they can even make this into a plastic. Can, is that is that the fiber that they make clothing out of? And yes, stuff? it's okay. the out, this is the outside of the plant. Okay, this is the outside of the fiber. This is the inside. We use this as the diaper. This is the bedding that goes inside mm -hmm. the deep litter. And I, I said, you know, send me some of the fiber. And here it is. And I'm like, this would make a great nesting material. Should we throw that to Ingrid too? You want me to throw this to you? I, I'm still, I can't believe you use that. I can't wait for the, I don't think I'm going to make it. This is too light. I can't wait for the playback on that one. I, I thought for sure you were just going to blow bubbles. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, not a chance. I don't know why I even tried. All right, let's get through some more questions. I know I, I, there's been so many people upset that we're not answering their questions, and I'm a little jealous. I know we started about uh, chickens and incubating, but it seems like it's all been chicken questions today, which if that's what they have, then let's stick with that. But I would love some coop questions or any. Well, all right, so this, can you look at question Mike, number six? Mike, damn it. You can just leave that on. Number six? Number six. So I, this, I think, is an important issue woman starts with cali coop with extensions four by 15 so feet. yeah so that's her cali coop and she has four, four chickens. chickens then she decides to get seven more chickens <laughs> and then she has a total of nine chickens and two roosters so she has 11 chickens in a cali coop so she was wondering if she could add another nest box or um maybe a roost bar but I want to explain why the, why the Cali Coop really isn't great for adding to your flock, why it's necessary, and I know it's appealing because it's a lower price point. Oh, my dear Lord. That you don't want to stick nine, what, 11 what chickens. What is the hen house size on that? It's four by three with one four-foot roost bar. So the Cali Coop, 
You know, the reason why we designed the Cali Coop originally is it's a great chicken coop. It's the same DNA as all our other coops, uh, but it is smaller, but we didn't jeopardize on quality. Uh, we didn't jeopardize on function. It has a deep litter system and it has tons of ventilation. But because it is smaller, we do not recommend maxing it out past four chickens. Um, and so we, we need I'm to- I'm just curious how, how, there, how, many, how that many chickens are sleeping in there. I cannot believe the numbers I'm reading right now. Right and now. I'm not saying it's not doable. There are people that can cram a lot of chickens in there. Can you put two roost bars in three feet? C can you? Yes. Is it a good idea? No. You're asking for problems. This is yeah. just not what we stand for. So yes, technically you can. I mean, there's people that raise chickens well enough to be happy enough in Chinese coops, but eventually you're going to run into problems. Um, I have always believed since I was a child, everything I have built for animals, I wanted to have it be almost as natural as possible for them. And of course with chickens, you know, we had to create these coops for our convenience. But what happens is so many people cut corners and they go too small, they forget what is convenient for the chickens and they wonder why they have problems, why the chickens, you know, die of heat exhaustion or they're, they're, they're stressed out, you know, because they're just in too small of a chicken coop. Um, but it is intriguing that, or it is enticing. You have a California coop because it's smaller, it's more affordable, but it is not designed to have more than four chickens. So how she was able to seven more. So what's that? A lot, you got to, huh? What? No, I'm just cold. No, you are you, not. Are you running the air conditioner now? No, no. All right. So she has 11 chickens. And she has a total, oh, nine hens. Okay, and two roosters. She wants to add another nest box. Okay, adding another nest box and adding some roost bars is not a good idea. Can you? Yes. I wouldn't recommend it because you're just going to run Can into you? the. I mean, is there enough room? There is enough room. It's, you're going to cause problems. It's just, it's going to be too tight. So I do not recommend it at all because we are here to help make sure your flock is happy, that you have happy hens, so you have happy, healthy eggs, and of course have this wonderful chicken coop where you are still able to deep litter. And, and speaking of that too, here's the other problem about adding too many hens in, in any size hen house, is when you're incorporating the deep litter system, we have this set it up so that the number of roost bars, the length of the roost bars, and how many egg boxes you have, is that perfect sweet spot for the deep litter system because if you have too much of a nitrogen load in this case too much chicken defecation going on you're going to have a high potential of failing with the deep litter system so it's just to me it's a big no no you're asking for problems have you ever eaten a raw egg i think we should do that what has gotten into you today <laughs> it's it, it, have you no i've never no except I, for cookie batter Lots and lots of cookies. Uh, anyways, so... Um, and even like pound cake when you've got six eggs in there. I can eat that better. So was, it, was that a good answer, Ingrid? Does that yes. make you, does that yes. make you happy? Because yeah, I know Ingrid gets really upset. I really care. I think, I mean, this company and myself and, and all of us included care about the welfare of the chickens. We're not just doing this to sell pretty coops. It's, it's so the, the chickens are happy and healthy. That's why I got into the business in the first place. Mm-hmm. So when we recommend certain things, it's not because we want to sell you a bigger coop. It's not because, you know, we, are, we want a bigger run if you can't free range. It's because we want the chickens to be happy. It's, it's just what you should do. It, uh, you, and you do have more flexibility on the run than you do the hen house because you need a place for everyone <laughs> to be able to be at sleep at night. But you have more flexibility with a run because you have the free range option or you may have that option. Right. But the hen house, you have, you do have to have enough space for everybody to be on a roost bar at night and not be too crowded. Exactly, exactly. So ho hopefully that made good sense. Uh, again, and if you're building your own chicken coop or you're chicken coop shopping, I've always said number one, it's all about the size. You got to start there, and then from there, you, you know, it's got to be good quality, good function, and of course, it needs to be beautiful. All right, we have a question from Fish and Matt Ryan, our friend. Um, and he said, do you recommend treating the water in the rain barrel with apple cider vinegar or electrolytes, or is there a way to keep mosquitoes out safely? Is that the reason to treat it? Um, well, we, for, we have a lot of rain barrels on our property. We use mosquito dunks in them, which is what they use for like horse 
you know, this big like horse troughs and stuff. Are those animal safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use that in, in farming. What um, is the, what is, how does it control the mosquito population? I, do, I don't know. It's a, it's just, but so you, whenever you have standing water, you want to kind of, I'm not sure. Okay, so he, here's why I was actually surprised what Ingrid just said is I know going back to my extermination days, I promise one show we will never have to talk about me being an exterminator. <laughs> well, but, that's a pretty good past life. My past life was really boring. <laughs> Um, I was never a fan. Uh, mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous animals on this planet, and it's very important to keep them under control. And mosquitoes are an aquatic insect, and they must have stagnant water in order for them to reproduce. And that's what they're trying to do. They're going to lay their eggs, then they're going to hatch into what you call wigglers, and then they will eventually pupate and then come out as adult mosquitoes. What a lot of times these dunks have is a larvicide. And I, okay. I'm not an expert on what that active ingredient could be to kill that larva stage, the wigglers, that could be potentially harmful for the chickens. But if the label says, which is all that fine print, you know, when you got a pesticide bottle on it, you want to read it. If it says this is safe for animal consumption, because I imagine there's got to be so many horse troughs that um, could be potential mosquito breeding areas. Uh, so that's great to know. I would love to I'm, learn. I'm not, I've, like I said, I haven't, I, my understanding is that it's food safe. Um, I know we use it in our rain barrels, which we water the garden with. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say right now, I'm not a hundred percent sure we used it in our chicken water. Oh, but, gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't, but the other way to get away from that would be to circulate mm -hmm. your, your chicken water. Yep, keep it circulating. That's one of the reasons why even our non-heated water systems, um, non made the executive decision three, four years ago, just include that pump uh, so you can keep it circulating should you have to. But um, they include a bacteria toxic only to mosquito larva. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm afraid I, to touch anything, to look anything up on here, quite frankly. So Well, <laughs> it's called BTI, a natural mosquito... So I don't know what that Yeah, is. so, you know, here's the thing. There is a screen over top of our rain barrels, and there, the screens should be small enough to prevent mosquitoes from getting down in there wanting to lay their eggs and allow them to hatch. Uh, so make sure the screen is intact, but not saying that's bulletproof. And, of course, if there is a larvicide, like what Ingrid's talking about and what Kristen's reading, then that could be a great solution. I would just look into that more. There is an old-school farmer's trick that still blows my mind that they used to do this, but... It makes sense. Those larvae have on top of their head what's called a trumpet, and that's what they have to use to come to the surface to breathe. And what the farmers used to do is they would take their old used motor oil and dump it into the ponds, and the oil comes to the top and it'll suffocate the larvae. I always wondered if you could take a food safe oil, yeah. put it into your rain barrel, and it'll stay on top, suffocating the larvae. Never tried it. Would be worth experimenting if that's something maybe you guys want to try. Uh, but what about a goldfish? So goldfish do a phenomenal job keeping. You know, they'll eat the larva, but at the same time they are defecating. And I think you know my gut tells me it would be safe for the chickens. You know because you don't want to overload it. You know, uh, but I can see a lot of people going, "Oh my gosh, I don't want my chickens drinking water that comes from a fish tank." You know. But in general, yes, goldfish or any type of feeder fish inside the rain barrels do a phenomenal job. And electrolytes and apple cider vinegar, I don't know how much you would put in for a 50-gallon, if it even does anything in a 50-gallon. Do you think that would cut down on mosquitoes? No, I, I think he's just asking about Okay, that's for chicken. the health Yeah, reason. people in general always ask that, you know, what can they put in the water? And mm -hmm. I just, I, I always wonder, is it even worth it? Or if there was a problem we got to figure out what is causing the problem and i guarantee you it's not the water uh but that can be do you use apple cider vinegar um you know i had heard that so much but i do will sometimes use electrolytes but i don't put it oops i don't put it in in the rain barrel water i have a, a separate waterer um and especially to use in the summer um that's about five gallons that i that hangs that also has the nipples underneath so it's it still gets them to work for it and if I want to add ice or electrolytes or anything when it's really hot, I like to, because that I can control better. 
as opposed to right, a big right, barrel right. that you know they're just pecking at that takes forever for them to go through. So it's almost like useless to do it in a big rain barrel. But if you do want to add something to the water, like electro, I like electrolytes in the summer just because it's so hot for them, and that's hard for them. So when you say electrolytes, are we taking Gatorade? Being no, like, I buy the, the I buy like a Rooster Booster, which is Rooster Booster. Yeah, you can mm. buy that. Um, you can find. We that. really need to start getting paid for some of these endorsements. I know. I love that name, Rooster Booster. Yeah, and it just and I don't do it all the time, and I use very little um, in the the three to five gallon waterers. But I also like to, the great thing about that is also you can keep it nice and cold for them. So I can just add, like I'll take a pitcher of ice and just pump it in there in the summer. I got to share a quick story because I don't want to have anyone ever make this mistake. But it happened on accident to one of our customers. Long story short, she kept telling me, Matt, I'm having all kinds of problems with my water system. It kept clogging on her, clogging on her, clogging. So finally, after like three, four months, I said, I'm coming down right now. I'd go somewhere down deep into the woods of PA. And I went down there. And it was unbelievable what I discovered. I went up to a rain barrel. And there was this funky smell. I'm like, God, what is that smell? And I went up to a rain barrel. And I just happened to put my hand on it. And it was very, very warm. She was sent the wrong heating element. It was the one that actually heats up the water, not the one that we normally sell, where it's just to keep it up around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, to mm -hmm. keep it from freezing. But she was also using a ton of apple cider vinegar. It was fermenting it and clogging the water oh. system. <laughs> as soon as I felt the rain, it just clicked. I said, oh, dear God. So I pulled the heater out, and somehow, some way, she was sent the wrong heater. You know, I don't know if it was our mistake or if it was our supplier's mistake, but I'll, I said I'll never forget that. And I can see that it would be she, – she didn't know. She just assumed this is designed to keep the water from freezing. Well, it should be warm, but, oh, I had no idea how much apple cider vinegar she was using. <laughs> she was – yeah, she was making – Oh, we got not, We got to get a mic inside Nan's office so, so she can buzz in. The manual. Thank you. Thank you. I try not that to. That was an important distinction. Yes. I appreciate that, Nan. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that she came Yeah. In. So I, I'm just not a big, I, I think people get a little crazy about how to make the water. I usually you don't have to add anything to that. You the I never do. And when these chickens are out, you know, we free range, they drink some of the nastiest water. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm almost like, don't drink that. <laughs> so we have other questions. I have standards. <laughs> yeah, questions, questions. Let's get to the questions. Do you have a version of the deep litter method for a chick brooder? Or is it even necessary? I use, I'm using hemp in my chick brooder just because I don't have anything else. And I don't. The late, do we have a system? Is that what the question was? Well, it's just a, a version. Because, I mean, they're not in a brooder for long enough for to actually for the deep litter to... Well, the brooder I compost. have in the house... Man, is that dusty. I got them all out of the house, by the way. My broodiness is over. I don't want those chicks in the house anymore. Um, but, the, but I do have chicks in the blue coop, the, oh, your coop, in my backyard with the mother hens, and that's just deep litter. So, I mean... So I have and had, they end up being healthier, actually, than the ones in the house with this much hemp in the in the brooder. Mm, you know, I've got a plastic bin. Okay, in you a don't say because you see. But seem... the ones, yeah, the ones in the in the blue coop with the litter that's been in there for years end up better off. They don't get the coxidosis, you know, tendencies and stuff like that. You seem to bash me a little bit when I recommend to people if they have the ability and the timing is right. That when they have their chicken coop, mm -hmm. to use your hen house as the no, brood. No, I just have the caveat that if you are a small scale backyard chicken person and you have your chicks in the brooder, in the hen house of the Carolina coop, you're not going to have interaction with them like you would if you had them in your house. And when they're cute and little and you're first starting out, I think it's fantastic to have those little tiny baby chicks in your house so you can watch them and handle them and, and bond with them. And you're not going to go out to your chicken coop as much as you would if they're in the house. And then they do get dusty, and then they should go outside. Unless your chicken coop is 
10 feet from your house. Like yes. Mine. Yes. <laughs> well, and, you know, it, it, and it depends on, and, and maybe you don't want your chickens that tame, you know, it's, Oh, you do. Well, you do. You absolutely, yeah. I think you I absolutely think do. You, this you is, would. I mean. Okay, so I wanted like to. Like, how often does your dad go out to the hen house? Well, he hasn't because he's been here. Right, right. <laughs> but if he were home, he probably wouldn't that much. But that's my only. Oh, otherwise I bet you. I makes, bet you he would differ. Otherwise, it makes. I'm surprised a great, I don't hear him yelling right now. Um, so, Ingrid. And those, I, that, nice pe that nice couple in Fashan island remember they had all their chicks in the brooder and that was fantastic right right that really worked out well for them yeah i mean i hear what you're saying and um i think the nice part is is that people can learn the pros and cons from us and make a decision that's going to work best for what them what do you think ingrid i don't know if i'd put day olds in there so okay oh, no i i when well, i had a broody and i hatched i wanted to use the nest box as um a brooder so i had everything all set up and then, and that was on, she hatched on um, Sunday. Uh, so this was after the tour de coupe. So, and then I was like, okay, great. She hatched. She was, I checked out. She was really, she was nice to them and everything. And I didn't think anything of it. And then later that afternoon, she went down the ladder and they followed her. So they were already in the run. I thought they would stay up there for like a week or so. Mm -hmm. And now I couldn't protect the little ones because the other chickens were going. I mean, it was just a thing. But yeah, so I think that I think you can use it as a as a brooder, but I understand wanting to, I, and I think you can still go out there and handle them as well. I think you just have to make sure. I mean, my dad right now is using his chicken coop, his hen house, as a brooder, and as soon as he got them, they were inside his hen house, and he just sent me a picture, which I just emailed to you, Ingrid. I'm not oh, sure boy. if you're able to bring it up. I will. I think it's phenomenal because he has those fancy rope wrap roost bars, and. You know, he's asked me, he's like, oh, how, how soon till they're jumping on? And I said, oh, maybe three, four weeks. They're two weeks and they're already up on the roost really? bar. Yeah, and he sent us some great pictures. I'm not sure if Inger can bring those up right, right now. Give but while you're, yeah, while you're doing that, uh, let's hammer through some more questions. We, I think we're, I think we're done with. Oh, we're done with these. Well, we. Uh, this is just my fidget. This is my fidget toy. That um, makes you look like a newscaster. Yeah, um, I do kind of like this. I thought you would like this, but I know that um, we're we're, we're going to get the printers working here, and I will make sure that it's heavier weight paper so that you feel special. I can give you another question. While yes, I try please. To try to find my email here. Um, they have eight. Somebody Poor me. Ingrid and the apple. Oh my gosh, I hate it. I have eight chicks that are six weeks old. They'll be moved out of the run this weekend. How do they know how to go up to the coop at night? And do I have to put them up there for a while? I think you will have to put them up there at least initially. So the. Are the chickens not already going up into the hen house? Because they she said just, she just brought them. She just brought them into the run at six weeks. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't do that. You're gonna want to stick them in that hen house yep. first. I would too. I would put them in the hen house for a few days. Another great reason, if you have the ability to use your hen house as the brooder. And I am now. They will learn that that is home, and then you aren't one of those helicopter chicken parents going out every night teaching your chickens that they have to wait for you to pick them up and put them inside the hen house. When they know that that hen house is their home, and they instinctively want to go up onto the tree branch, in this case the roost bar, and then after you know five, six weeks, they got all their adult feathers, that's when you open up that chicken opening, that chicken door, and let them go down into the run on their own. If you follow those steps, I will almost, I will guarantee you 99%, they will go right back to that hen house on their own. If you are now at five or six weeks just bringing them out to your coop and putting them in the run, you will be. You yeah, will, they're not going to know to go in the hen house. They're not going to know it's there. Not, in, not immediately. Yeah. You know, they are curious creatures, but you might be very disappointed that they won't be up there that first night or not right. even the next night. So, yeah, I would say put them up in there. The best time to move your chickens from your brooder into your hen house is at night. Put them right on, side, right on that roost bar mm -hmm. and let them learn to come down on their own. And don't leave the food and water in the brooder or in the hen house either. Make them have to go down there and get it. All right. Are you mad at me? No. <laughs> Like it's, it's just a fascinating subject when you talk about should you brew them inside or inside the hen house. All right, here's Jerry's 
birds. I hate that we can't see. I know. It. So the, here's the one with the bunch of them in the hen house. Right. So I'm not sure where we are. I'm not sure if we're down in the bottom of the corner of your screen or, or wherever. Yes, you but, are. All right, perfect. Well, I hope you enjoy these pictures. I just thought that was awesome. One, I'm so happy for my father. Look at this one. Uh, I know. So nice. <laughs> It's a little um, baby bird. And I just thought it was great. The I mean, it, bar. It's just, it's that simple. It I, is that simple. I love that your dad got a coop and chickens. Yeah, and I love that it's a Carolina coop. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Okay. We'll go and on. I can't wait till we have chickens here. Um, we do have our new sales girl. She's going to be, she might be listening right now. I'm not sure or not. Um, she will be coming here the 22nd to start her new job. And uh, she's got a lot to learn. I, I hope she's ready for it. And um, I told I'm hoping we have a chicken coop up and running by then because that's going to be one of the best ways for her to learn chickens. You're going to have her help put it together. She's going to be doing everything. She is going to learn it from the ground up. And, of course, I'm going to be relying on you a lot with the chicken knowledge because uh, you know way more than I do. So Kyle's asking if the chicks are in the hen house, will they be okay without an external heat source? You have to have... A heat source if they're baby chicks no matter what if you're if they're in the hen house you got to have a heat source if they do not have their adult feathers so that means your hen house is the brooder and I don't recommend using a heat lamp um, I do love uh, the brincy the heat plate that they can go under that mimics them going underneath mama hen but yes you've got to have a heat source and you just want to be there's lots of companies that make those now there is there absolutely is uh, I just I prefer the brincy and um, Premier has a, has lots of sizes. Yeah, and you can tell what size you should have based on how many chicks yeah. you're going to have to have. I have the one that's this big. <laughs> and you can explain to people that they can go into the hen house when they're fully feathered. Yeah, so it depends on what age they yeah. are. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. If they yeah. do not have their adult feathers, you've got to have a heat source. Make sure and whatever your heat source is, it's extremely safe. Depending on what temperature it is outside, too. Yeah, I mean, there's so many circumstances, but, and you can see the chart, you know, there's even, I saw a graph one time, we should maybe have one that we save, that as they get older, the temperature goes down, it was like a degree a day for every day they get older, or something mm -hmm. like that, or you go down like every five degrees every week. Or you get tired of all the dust and you just get them out of your house as soon as possible. You know, that was another thing I wanted to mention, too. I we were talking pictures of the dust. We have were you seen my pictures? No, I have not. But we were talking about, you know, we want the bedding to be low in dust. And I feel that's important because chickens do have a sensitive respiratory system. However, how many times do you go see them take a dust bath in, in, in sand or, you know, something that's horrible for you to breathe in, and that doesn't seem to bother them? Fireplace ash and DE, and they, they shake like they're pig pen. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it's just funny how um, something was left on the bookcase and left. That's dust. Oh my God, Matt's eyeballs. <laughs> that much dust. Again, another great reason to have your hen house as a brooder. Uh, yeah, if you guys can see that. There was something left on that bookcase. Oh, Al. Yep. Yeah. So we have another and question. And this, this is a black bookcase. Oh, geez. Yeah. We have a question from Chester. Um, how do I get the chickens to use the horizontal water bar? They seem to only want to use the regular water trough. Get rid of the regular water trough. Oh, they, I think they prefer it. I mean, I'd hate to say that because I use all the nipple stuff. But if I'm out there with a hose, like I was out there with a hose the other day and I had a swarm of chickens trying to drink out of the water hose. Sure. Yeah. yeah the water bar is not to make your chickens... That's, how can I say this? The water bar is for us. It's for well, our and convenience. And it's to keep the water clean. Because if you have an open trough, it, they're always kicking water in there and making it dirty. It's really the best way to have access to clean water for the chickens. Thank you. All the time. Right. Exactly. Um, so you, you, if the, the point to that water bar, using those horizontal nipples, is for our convenience. Keeps the water clean. And yes, you can make the argument that it's healthier for the chickens, even though they'll drink the dirtiest water. It's for us, especially that that is what also allows them to have access to water in the wintertime and not have it freeze. But if you are introducing a new water system and you want them to use it, you've got to eliminate what they have learned to use, and they will use it. I've seen it over and over. I've had where it took 10 to 15 minutes for them to learn it, and it's, I've seen it where it took over a day. 
for them to learn it. What and about then, little baby chicks? Can they use the horizontal? Or their little beaks are too small to engage, isn't it? Um, no. So, okay, here's the truth to that. And here's where I got, I was so mad when someone took the world's best horizontal nipple that was made in Europe, sent it to China so China could copy it, which they're horrible copiers. And then he started selling them at a cheaper price. But here's what happened. The spring on it was a lot stiffer. Oh. So the baby chicks were not able to use it like they were able to use the water nipples, the horizontal wall nipples that we sell that come from Europe. Um, but I would still say with the baby, baby chicks, I love the vertical nipples. They're very, very easy for them to hit and they really don't have to do anything else. The water will drip. And that is by far the easiest way to that's have water use. for baby chicks. And then you switch over to the horizontal nipples. Yep. Yeah. And that's what the the vertical nipples that I use on that other mm -hmm. external one, that's what they learned when they were just a little. But I also used when I got the Bantam, and I was afraid that the Bantam wasn't going to use the water bar, what I did was when I introduced them, I had a little trough waterer, and I would put it out there because she was kind of isolating herself, and I put it out there for her and she, to make sure that she had water source. And the other chickens, of course, would use it. And until I saw her jumping up on the little... Um, cinder block I have on the water bar until I was just I said did you see her eat drink out of there I kept asking my husband did you see did you see mm -hmm. so once I knew that she was going to use the water bar then um, then I just got rid of that mm -hmm. so it's just that simple yep good question yep um, all right we're getting on I know how did we do how many questions how many comments have we not gotten to we're just a few that's late a few late comments okay questions it is two o'clock. We had a horrible rough start. And I'm sorry. Yeah, we started. And Matt's sorry. Yes. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's my fault. I know, but I feel bad because I was take, trying to take over here. But that, you would have, you would have, you would have eventually figured it out. But it would have taken you way longer. I just have, you know. Again, I apologize to our half an hour delay this morning, uh, or this afternoon. I guess we should say. But we'll look back on it a year from now and laugh. The like, good thing is that I can edit this down. Yes, that, that is true. I mean, you if you're watching right now, you are live. It is May 7th, 2 o'clock Eastern. You are watching a live show. That's good. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so are we all done with questions, comments? No, We're do, you wrap want it up? Another, do you want another question? Do you got time? A couple more. We'll do two more, then I promise we'll be done. Okay. Notice nothing. Well, I got time, yeah. Okay. Are we having lunch? Oh, lunch sounds so here's good. A, here's a quick, quick one. Um... What if you are introducing a young flock to teach them to grow up with established chickens? Oh, we get that one every week. I know. We, we get that. So this tells me. I we... wrote a blog about this, people. <laughs> yeah. Go to our website. I wrote a blog. Show it. Show it. Show oh, it. Use it. Go to it. Okay. Share the page. Go to our website. Show and, and, them the blog. But I understand why so many people are asking. It's a very difficult and lots of people, almost everybody adds to their flock. So... I understand why the question is. And I love hearing time. that they're adding to their flock because mm -hmm. it just tells and me. There's, and chickens, they're just, they break the rules. There's no one size fits all answer to that. It, there's different variables. I've found that the, the amount of space is, is critical. I can drop one new one in my flock because they're free range and they have lots of room. I have acres and they... They, they do fine and there's multiple feeding stations watering stations but if you put new a new one in a in a run with established other chickens then yeah that's going to be very difficult it's worse it's going to get beat up yeah it's worse than the new new guy in prison i guess and every day it has to get beat up it's got to everybody's got to get their peck in every single day for like two weeks it's horrible it's absolutely horrible so what is the best way to introduce hens to an existing flock okay i have my blog up all right, awesome. Check out the blog. Ingrid is very proud of that. She should be. She works very hard on that blog. And she was successful in doing this. Yeah. Yeah, especially when they show up in the middle of the night. Well, that was a little rough. But the other ones, they're fine. It went so much better than I thought. And I tried to do everything right by separating them, but I didn't really have the setup to do what a lot of people, what they say you should do. Meaning, like, give keep them, them separate. Keep them separate so yeah. we can see each other, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I did do a little bit of that. There was that, and I, I was able to. But it, it didn't take that long, 
and you have to let them kind of fight it out, and you got to let this pecking order long, get established. As long as they got room. And another to fight advantage it out. that she had is she brought in several. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it really, so they were, it wasn't like she brought in one and there was an existing flock of many. They were really even, right? It was roughly. It was about four to six, and then I had that other lost that one. So it was five to, I mean, five to four. Mm -hmm. And I thought for a while there would be two separate flocks because you kind of saw yeah. them like one gang here and the other gang there. But at, it didn't take long for they, them to kind of split up to their own little things. So they are completely integrated. Whereas, for instance, the, um, the wine dot, she seems to love to hang out with my bard rocks. Hmm. You know, so it's just so, which is one of the original flocks. So they've kind of just made their own alliances within that. So they didn't, they didn't stay as like two separate flocks, which happens a lot of times. So yeah. it's, it's right. And they weren't one flock. I picked out like two from this mm -hmm. and two from that mm -hmm. and then threw in whatever. Yeah. But it, 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 it I was surprised because I, I heard horror stories right. and it worked really well. And I just write about my experience. So check out our blogs. Yes, check out that blog. <laughs> All the information's there. Um, it's really well written. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to be able to do more of it, but Matt has me working like crazy. There's going to be a lot of changes coming up. Uh, so many things coming up, and I think we'll be able to do with Ingrid that we've done with every employee as we, just, as we continue to grow. I ask everyone, what is it you love to do and what do you hate to do? We take away the stuff that you hate to do and we find someone new to just focus on that particular job. It's like taking a whole pie and cutting up more pieces. We're about to cut up a lot of smaller pieces, but I think everyone's going to enjoy their new jobs coming up, especially in this new building. Love the building. Um, all right, so we pretty much have all our questions. Okay. And by the way, Kenzie said don't drink and eat a raw egg it's gross oh she has she i has. would she love to it's disgusting i would love to know how mackenzie knows that maybe she got inspired after yeah. watching rocky we don't know but oh, gosh <laughs> all righty it's after two o'clock i'm glad we were able to make the two hour show the special show sorry for the problems in the very beginning ingrid thank you so much for your help chris and nice thanks for showing ingrid up here. thank you yes oh isn't this great yeah, yeah. all this together is, this is finally we're all together and this i is, love non non coming in here i got to get non that uh, a button mm -hmm. that she can chime in yeah uh, oh yeah yeah you got a mic her in there that yeah she can we'll, mute. we'll get a mic you know uh she, she can chime in because i think that's very very important uh, and maybe probably do the same thing with Mackenzie. I mean, they just know so much more what's going on behind the scenes. My job is just to keep the phones ringing. They've got really relevant information to insert. Absolutely. And that's the whole point. I want everyone to be able to gain something from this show. You know? um, I just realized that you never told me how to make it not live. Is there an end button? <laughs> I think there's a red end button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over and help Ingrid. Kristen, thank you so much for your time today. It's time to go get lunch. Everyone out there, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this show. And we will be back now every single Friday unless something – what are you about to do? Unless something crazy happens, we're getting it finally. Oh, a double straw. No. I got music playing. It's no time to go. Here. It's time to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy weekend, everyone.